Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just broke down some big talking points around the Big Ten. That will not be the last time that we do that. We're going to work through some talking points just to get really ready for the season. We're getting very, very close to this thing kicking off and I could not be more excited, but uh, we'll break that down throughout the week and then we'll continue through the Power Four as we kind of see fit, honestly, over the next couple of weeks. But um, let's get into the Group of Five playoff because this is going to be the biggest debate of the entire year. I'll be totally honest. It might not be the most interesting debate of the entire year because there will be teams like Penn State and teams like Missouri and Tennessee fighting over those last couple of spots, but I can almost promise there's going to be a logjam in the group of five playoff team. Someone's got to get in. The top five group, of, uh, the top five conference champions get in, and the Pac-12 champions just not getting in. Let's just be totally honest. But the reality is... Someone's got to get in, and it's going to be really interesting to see who that team is. Um, and I think the biggest thing here is Group of Five is likely never going to get two teams in. Um, I'd love to tell you that they could, and I think there's a path in even this year where you could have a couple of teams that are worthy of getting in, but let's be totally honest, they want as many of those big-time teams in, and making the argument that a 9-3 and SEC team is better than an 11-1 and AAC team, not a hard thing to do. I'll just be totally honest, I could do it very, very comfortably, and likely win over the entirety of the college football playoff committee, but let's jump into the five teams that have the best odds to make the playoff, and then break down why this is just going to be a huge issue at the end of the year. So it starts with a team that is going to be just really, really good this year in Missouri. Uh, Missouri. Memphis. Mi uh, Missouri is also going to be very good this year, but that's beside the point. <laughs> Memphis is the team that I want to uh, talk about, and they have the cleanest path. Um, they have the best odds to win the best group of five conference in the American. So if you can pull that off, you're going to be successful. That's just the reality, and you can definitely roll into the college football playoff, even with one loss. Um, and there's going to be some big-time chances for them to make some noise throughout the season. You know, they have some big games. One at the end could define their entire season, but guys like Seth Hannigan, um, Mario Anderson coming in from South Carolina is absolutely huge for this team, like as big as any addition for really any group of five team across the country. Now, there are a couple of guys at the quarterback position that might be a little bit bigger, but Mario Anderson's going to have a huge uh, say in what Memphis is this upcoming season. I think he's going to be absolutely incredible, and I think anytime you can get a guy to jump down from the SEC ranks down to the American, he's going to have an effect pretty much immediately. So very much like this kid, and I think he's going to be huge. They do have the best odds to win that American conference, and they're going to be in this conversation. There's no two ways about that. They could lose two games and still be very much in this conversation, but the reality is it could come down to a game with another team on this list in the last week of the season that we'll break down a little bit later here. But I also want to get into Liberty. This is the team that everyone's kind of circling this time of year. The Conference USA is controlled by this team. Um, there's a couple of teams that you know are trying to get into that conversation. Uh, Western Kentucky being the one that's kind of starting to make a little bit of waves, but there's still a gap there. There's no two ways about that. That's why they're minus odds to win this conference. It's absolutely ridiculous the gap that has formed in this conference. They do play App State out of conference, which will be a fun game to watch and will help them a, a lot in this conversation. If they can beat App State and especially beat them by a touchdown, 10 points, 14 points, they'll show that they might just be the best group of five team out there. So it'll be a very interesting game. That might be the most important game, weirdly enough, for them throughout the season. But the reality is, when I look at this team, they just they have to go undefeated. Um, I see no other way for them to get into the playoff, at least if I was on that committee. I think they are a very talented team. I think they do a lot of really incredible things. But at the end of the day, if you're going to play a schedule that they are playing this season, you pretty much have to run the table to be in this conversation, especially with some of the other teams that are going to be in this conversation that, you know, 11-2 and two Memphis or 12-1 uh, and one Tulane or 10-2 and two Miami of Ohio, whoever it is, I just don't think they necessarily stack up. Now, one of the big things in their favor is they have one of the most electric players in the country. Caden Salter is absolutely ridiculous. He does things on a football field that very few people can do. Let's just be totally honest. And he's a guy that can single-handedly drag them to an undefeated season. The thing is, if he has a game here or there that isn't necessarily up to his standards, what happens? Um, does this team fall off a cliff? Does this team, if this team drops one game, if they drop two games, 
or are they just dead in the water? Um, and I think that's kind of the reality they're working under. I mean, I saw, I believe it was Andy Staples released some very bold predictions for this upcoming season, something I will likely do here pretty soon. But um, one of them was an undefeated Liberty is left out of the playoff. That is a real reality that could happen because the conference is just not strong. Uh, if you're trying to get the best group of five team in, I would make the argument that Liberty is not in that conversation, even if they do go undefeated. So a lot going into that. We'll obviously unpack it throughout the season, but it'll be an interesting team to watch. Uh, Boise State is the next one I want to zero in on, and they pluck some really, really good players from the Power 5 level, mainly Malachi Nelson, the very talented quarterback that was at USC a year ago, and Chris Marshall, a guy that I believe has bounced around a little bit. He might have just been an a and honestly, but... Regardless, two very big-time transfers that were high recruits coming out. Spencer Danielson is coming in as the head coach. He was the interim uh, at the end of last year at, after Andy Avalos was let go. He is now the DC at TCU, so everyone's bouncing around in the coaching industry right now. But they do have some really, really big games where they can show who they are. Um, I think Oregon's obviously the biggest of the bunch. Uh, if they can at least hang around in that game. They'll show that they are an elite team, that they are top, towards the top of the group of five, and they don't necessarily need to get close to winning it or you know be within four points or three points or anything crazy. But if you keep this to a two-possession game, if you're 14 or under, I think that's a huge win for Boise State. And obviously, that doesn't necessarily sound like a huge win, but it really would be in the college football playoff size. And then you have Washington State also on the schedule, a big-time game where you can just prove, you know, you're a little bit above a team that was just in the Power 5 a year ago. And then UNLV is another one that I'm definitely circling, among others in the uh, Mountain West, that are going to be huge. And I think the cool thing about this team is they might just have the best player at a certain position in the entire country. And Ashton Jainty is just absolutely ridiculous at the running back position. This dude is incredible, and frankly, I'm shocked that he's still at Boise State. With the state of everything in the transfer portal and everything bouncing around all over the place, I feel like this was a guy that everyone was calling, that everyone was after, that especially with the need at running back for some of these teams— I'm surprised he's still up in Boise. I'm very glad he's still up in Boise, don't get me wrong, but I can't imagine his phone was not blowing up. I'll just put it that way. But let's move right along here to Tulane. This is a very, very interesting team because Boise State, as we talked about, dipped their toe into the portal. They played around, got some big-time players. Tulane just jumped all the way in. They got Ty Thompson, Mario Williams, Shaz Preston on offense. They got Jalen Geiger. They got Lou Tillery and many more on defense. They did a really, really good job of filling out this team that lost a lot of guys this past year. Michael Pratt being the main among them, the quarterback, and Ty Thompson coming in. A lot of really good talent coming from Oregon. A lot of expectations going into this year, but the first time he's ever started uh, for a team. So it'll be very interesting to see how that goes. The chances early in this season are huge for Tulane. They play o o uh, they play Oklahoma and they play Kansas State, and both of those are great arguments to say we can at least hang with these teams. It's the same argument that I was making with uh, Boise State and Oregon. You don't necessarily have to win these games. You don't necessarily have to you know even stay within three points of these games. You just have to prove that you belong on that same field, and that's exactly what they did a couple of years ago against USC. In fact, they beat USC, but both those games are going to be huge, and if they can even win one of them, it's going to really put them ahead of the curve in terms of getting into that playoff. Also, this is a team I just really, really like. I think a lot of things are in place for them. I think John Summerall coming in after Willie Fritz moved on to Houston, which is another guy I'd love to watch over the next couple of years because I think it's going to get really interesting down there in Houston, but... I think Summerall is a guy that will be a Power 5 coach within the next, let's say, three years. Um, I think it could be next year, frankly, depending on how this goes. If they make the playoff, there will be people calling. I can almost promise you that. Now, it'll be a really interesting thing to watch with you know, the expanded uh, coaching staffs and everything in between, how all of this kind of plays out. But this is a guy that absolutely will be a Power 5 head coach at least in the next three years. I feel pretty confident about that. And another guy that I think is going to be a Power 5 head coach over the next three, five years is Jeff Trailer. I think him and UTSA have built something out there that is really, really incredible for a number of reasons. And the biggest one, the biggest moniker for why this is such a good program right now, they're 111th in the country in returning production. They do not return much of anyone. They lose their big-time quarterback, Frank Harris, from a year ago. They lose so many pieces 
and they're still top five in odds to make the college football playoff. That's how good of a program that Jeff Trailer has built, and he's a star in this business. He is someone that, frankly, he could be a number of different Power 5 coach, uh, head coaching jobs right now, I think. I just think he's turned down a couple to get the right one down the road, and it's coming. I can almost promise you that. Owen McCown is going to take over for at quarterback for uh, Frank Harris, which is huge shoes to fill. There's no two ways about that, but Owen McCown is a very, very talented kid. Obviously comes from a very rich quarterback family, so no worries about that. Uh, Devin McEwen, the third highest receiver from a year ago, he's their top guy returning, so obviously that kind of plays into the returning production number, and it's going to be low, but the reality is this team has recruited at a really high level, brought in some big-time transfers through the portal, and have done just some really incredible things. The portal is the big one where they brought in a kid that I think can totally flip this season on its head. Uh, Denver Harris is a really good cornerback. He ran into some trouble off the field at AM and then went to LSU and has just never really found his footing. But if he finds his footing, this kid can play really elite football. He can be an out, outright lockdown corner on the outside for this team. And if that happens, then they're going to roll for a lot of their uh, season. They do play Texas early on in the season. That would be another great uh, place for them to show that at least they belong. At least they're in this conversation. And then you got Memphis down the road, and that's the big one, obviously. If you can knock them off, then maybe you're the team that comes out of the American. So there's a ton going into this season for UTSA and for all of the teams that I just broke down. But That doesn't even scratch the surface of the teams that could make this type of run. Miami of Ohio is a team that I'm watching very, very closely that I think could make some real noise. App State, South Florida is a team I love with Alex Golish down there. Texas State, another one. DJ Kinney, I absolutely love what he's doing. So there's a lot of things going on around the group of five teams. And frankly, this is not an exact science by any means. It's going to be all over the place. The arguments of who who deserves to be in, who doesn't deserve to be in, are not going to be easy to be had, but it's going to create a weird log jam, and it'll be fascinating to see what does a 11 and 2 American team look like compared to a 13 and 0 Conference USA team or a MAC team that's 11 and 2 or 11 or 12 and 1. Whatever this looks like, it's going to be all over the place. But the reality is, we're running into a big time log jam at the end of the season, and that battle is going to be. Just fascinating to watch, really, all throughout the season. But we're going to take our second break here. When we come back, we're going to break down some teams in the Power 5 level that could just turn their conference on its head. If these teams hit, their entire conference changes around them, and it could lead to them being at the very top of their conference. So we'll break that down right after this, so stick with us. <laughs> 